Okay, so to begin with, um, let's spend um, a moment to give acknowledgement to the traditional custodians of the um, Aboriginal nations that we meet on. I know that some people are coming in from overseas, but in Australia, we give acknowledgement to the First Nations people and their um, custodianship of the land. And um, we pay our respects to the elders, past, present and future and acknowledge that um, the Uluru Statement is pointing us in the remember um, their sovereign um, stewardship of this land, of which we are very grateful. Thank you. seems to be no way he works in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me he will be my guide hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way he will make a way. Sing it with me. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to the side with love and strength. Today, he will make a way. He will make a way. By a roadway in the wilderness, he'll lead me. Rivers in the desert will I see. Heaven and earth will fade. But his word will still remain, that's right, and he will do something new today. in 
So that was beautiful. Um, oh, one more. One more. Yes, it is good. I am the mystic fae. I am the mystic fae. Which the hand of omnipotence hath reared. I am the lamp which the finger of God hath lit within its niche and caused to shine. With deathless splendor Who's at the 
The door of knowledge of ancient being had ever been and will continue forever to be closed in the face of men. No man's understanding shall ever gain access unto his holy court. As a token of his mercy, however, as a proof of his loving kindness, he had manifested unto men the day star of his divine guidance, the symbols of his divine unity, and had ordained the knowledge of these sanctified beings to be identical with the knowledge of his own self. Whoso recognizeth them had recognized God. Whoso hearkeneth to their call had hearkened to the voice of God. And whoso testifieth to, to the truth of their revelation had testified to the truth of God himself. Whoso turneth away from them had turned away from God, and whoso believeth in them had disbelieved, disbelieved in them had disbelieved in God. Continue. Every one of them in the way of God had connected this world with the realm above and the standard of his truth unto everyone in the kingdoms of earth and heaven. There are the manifestations of God amid his men, the evidences of his truth and the signs of his glory. All the prophets of God, whenever made manifest unto the peoples of the world, have invariably foretold the coming of yet another prophet after them and had established such signs as would herald the advent of the future dispensation. To this, the record of all sacred books bear witness, Baha'u'llah. Contemplate with thine inward eye the chain of successive revelations that have linked the manifestations of Adam with that of the Bab. I testify before God that each one of these manifestations has been, has been sent down to the operation of the divine will and purpose, that each have been the bearer of a specific message, 
that each have been entrusted with a divinely revealed book and been commissioned to unravel the mysteries of a mighty tablet. The measure of the revelation with which every one of them has been identified had been definitely foreordained. This verily is a token of our favour unto them, if ye be of those that comprehend this truth. That the divers communions of the earth and the manifold systems of religious belief should never be allowed to foster the feelings of animosity among men is in this day of the essence of the faith of God and his religion. These principles and laws, these firmly established and mighty systems have proceeded from one source and a rays of one light. That they differ from one from another is to be attributed to the varying requirements of the ages in which they were promulgated. Jesus said to them, Verily I say unto you, before Abraham was I am. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when I can't see beyond. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come from the Bible. And then, if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, here he is there, believe him not. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. But of that day and hour, that hour, knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch, and pray, for ye know not when the time is. King James Bible. This one. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how, how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. King James Bible. Yet the Lord forewarned Israel and Judea by the hand of every prophet, of every seer, saying, Turn ye away from evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes 
according to all the law which I command your fathers, which I sent to you by the hand of my servant, the prophets, Navim prophet, Malachi and Kings. At the period, brethren, there will be rise in the world an exalted one named Matera, fully awakened, abounding in wisdom and goodness, happy with the knowledge of the worlds, unsurpassed as a guide to the mortals willing to be led, a teacher for gods and men, an exalted one, a Buddha, even as I am now. He himself will thoroughly know and see, as it were, face to face, this universe with its worlds of spirits, its Brahmas and its Maras, and its world of recluses and Brahmins, of princes and peoples, even as I now myself thoroughly know and see them. Diganakia. And when there came to them an apostle from God, affirming the previous revelation made to them, some of those to whom the scriptures were weaven through the book of God behind their backs as if they knew it not, the Quran. Nor thus estimate of Allah do they make when they say, not in dot Allah sent down to men by way of revelation, say, who then sent down the book that Moses brought? A light and guidance to men, but they make it into separate seats for sure. Why ye conceal much of its contents? Therein go, ye taught that which ye knew not, neither ye nor your fathers, say Allah, send it down, then leave them to flounge in vain, discourse and trifling. And this is a book which we have revealed, bringing blessings and confirming the revelations which came before it, that you may warn the mother of cities and all around her, those who believe in the hereafter, believe in this book, and they are constant in guiding their prayers. The Quran. I think sing was doing number seven. Uh, pardon? Wasn't it sing who undertook to do number seven? Yes, yes. Number seven, sing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I will read it. Okay, I think that's good. We gave Moses the book and followed him up with a succession of messengers. We gave Jesus, the son of Mary, clear signs and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. Is it that whenever there comes to you a messenger with what ye yourselves desire not, ye are puffed up with pride? Some ye call imposters and others ye slay, the Quran. The messengers believeth in what had been revealed to him from his Lord, as with the men of faith, each one of them believeth in Allah, his angels, his books, and his messengers. We have no distinction, they say, between one and another of his messengers. And they say, we hear 
and we obey. We seek thy forgiveness, our Lord, and to thee is the end of all journeys. Say, there came to you messengers before me with clear signs and even with what ye asked for. Why then did you slay them if ye speak the truth? Then if they reject thee, so were rejected messengers before thee who came with clear signs, books of dark prophecies and the book of enlightenment, the Quran. O oh, ye who believe, believe in Allah and his messenger and the scripture which he had sent to his messenger and the scripture which he sent to those before him and who denieth Allah, his angels, his book, his messengers and the day of judgment had gone far far astray Quran and we sent Noah and Abraham <clears throat> and established in their line prophethood and revelation and some of them were on right guidance but many of them became rebellious transgressors then in their wake we followed them up with others of our messengers. We sent after them Jesus, the son of Mary, and bestowed on him the, the gospel. And we ordained in the hearts of those who followed him compassion and mercy. But the monasticism which they invented for themselves we did not prescribe for them. We commanded only the seeking for the good pleasure of Allah, but they did not foster as they should have done, yet we bestowed on those among them who believed their due reward but many of them are rebellious transgressors. The Quran. When righteousness declines, but when wickedness is strong, I rise from age to age and take visible shape and move a man with men, succoring the good, thrusting the evil back, and setting virtue on her feet again in the Bahad Gita. And those who formerly in the past were holy and enlightened ones, those blessed ones also have pointed out to their disciples this self same goal, as has been pointed out by me to my disciple, and those who afterwards in the future will be holy and enlightened ones. Those blessed ones also will point out to their disciples this self same goal, as has been pointed out by me to my disciple. The eightfold part to the other world. We are muted, Siva. Okay. The, the divine manifestation since the day of Adam have striven to unite humanity so that all may be accounted as one soul. The function and purpose of 
a shepherd is to gather and not to disperse his flocks. The prophets of God have been, have been divine shepherds of humanity. They have laid the foundation of the oneness of God, summoned all to universal peace. All these holy divine manifestations are one. They have served one God, promulgated the same truth, founded the same institution, and reflected the mm -hmm. same light. Their appearance has been successive and correlated. Each one has announced and extolled the one who was to follow and all laid the foundation of reality. They summoned and invited the people to love and make human world a mirror of the word of God. Therefore, the divine religion they establish have one foundation. Their teachings, proof and evidence are one. In the name, they for, they, in the name and form, they differ, but in reality, they agree and are the same. Baha'i Fit, Abdul Baha. Okay, thus, there have been many holy manifestations of God. 1,000 years ago, 200,000 years ago, 1 million years years ago, the bounty of God was flowing and the radiance of God was shining. The dominion of God was existing. Abdul Baha. Stella, you are muted. Ah, okay, thank you. Now that all the readings have been done, thank you, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Ahmed Anis as the guest speaker for today. Uh, Dr. Anis was born in Iran. He spent his youth in the UK and then migrated to Australia. Uh, he is a Baha'i and he has an educational background in engineering and medicine and qualified in, the, in Australia as well. He has a lot of experience, including roles as an associate lecturer, research officer, technical support officer, and is currently working as a medical researcher and database manager. His interests are theological and astronomy topics. I'm sure we will find the talk very interesting and I look forward to learning from you, Dr. Anis. Thank you. The field is yours. Am I able to share my screen? Uh, Do I have permission to share my screen? Yes, you can. Yeah, okay. Um, just before I start my presentation, um, I'd like to um, show some books to you. Um, and then after that, put you into a historical background, uh, and then we talk about uh, kitab -e Um The best book that um, is available on um, kind of a tutorial for that, that book is a tutorial on kitab -e Iran by Professor Nadi, which lives in Wollongong and he's a Baha'i academic. And he's gone extensively, he's very thoughtful, extensively, um, paragraph by paragraph and uh, describe the topics that are in that book. And for those um, friends um, that are um, uh, patient uh, in the language, um, the, the patient Kitab Iran, um, and there is this book which gives the uh, individual words that are uh, interesting and this describes those words in this book. It's called Qamus e Mukhtasar Iqan. The other book that I referred for my talk 
is um, the, Re the Revelation of Baha'u'llah, Volume 1. Uh, and um, this is from um, Mr. Adib um, Tahirzadeh, one of Baha'i consulates that has passed away now. Uh, but he goes extensively and talks about uh, the Book of Certitude. Um, so um, just, I'll just open up my, share my screen. Um, so can you see this? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, now uh, just to take you into a kind of historical background, um, I'm not sure how much you know about Baha'i faith, um, but um, the Bab, uh, the forefather founder of the faith, uh, declared his mission in 1844. And during six years, um, he kind of, um, expanded the faith through Iran. And then he started in 1850. Now after that, um, Baha'u'llah, uh, the founder of Baha'i faith, um, he being a Babi, um, was exiled from Iran to Baghdad. And he was living there um, while um, um, not, not had declared his faith yet. Um, so I'll go through the history of uh, what happens, how this book was revealed. Um, the kitab e iran which uh, is, uh, is English name is the Book of Certitude, uh, was uh, revealed in 1862. That's about 12 years after the martyrdom of the Baal. Um, just fix my images so that I can see. Background, um, Baha'u'llah wrote the Book of Certitude in honor of Haji Mizza Sayyid Muhammad, the Bab's maternal uncle. The Bab had three maternal uncles. The first to embrace his faith was Haji Mizza Sayyid Ali, known as Khale Azam, the greatest uncle. It was this uncle that cared for the Bab. After passing off the Bab's father, he recognized the Bob as soon as he was acquainted with his nephew's claim. A few months before the martyrdom of the Bob, he was publicly martyred in Tehran, and he's one of the seven famous martyrs of Tehran. The eldest uncle, Haji Mizar Muhammad, although fully aware of his outstanding qualities of his nephew, was not converted to his faith until he meets Baha'u'llah in Baghdad in 1862. The Kitab Iran was revealed by Baha'u'llah in answer to his questions when he went to pilgrimage to Baghdad and visited Baha'u'llah. The third uncle of Bab is Haji Mizza Hassan Ali, which I will talk about further. For many years, these two uncles and the Bob worked as merchants in Shiraz and Musheh, which is a south, southern city in Iran. And when the Bob went to pilgrimage and declared his mission there, upon his return, Haji Mizza Sayyid Muhammad, when the uncle of Bob, was in Boucher and received or reside, was residing in Boucher and received him in his house, but failed to recognize his station. After the martyrdom of the Bab in 1850, the Bab mother, Fatima Bagom, could not no longer bear to live in Shiraz and left for Kabbalah to be near the shrine of Imam Hussein. Later on, she recognized the station of Baba. Agha Mizan Nuruddin has a series of discussions with Haji Mizan Sayyid Muhammad in Shiraz about the mission of the Bab. And he requested this uncle of the Bob to go to pilgrimage and visit Baha'u'llah and discuss issues that he has in acquaintance of the new faith with him and also visit his sister. He accepts this offering and writes to his brother, Haji Mizo Hassan Ali, who was in Yazd, which is another city close to, by, close to the Shiraz at the time to accompany him. His brother accepts this 
and both go to Holy Land for pilgrimage. When they arrive in Baghdad, he divulges to his brother his intent to see Baha'u'llah, Mizah Hassan Ali, refuses and departs. But Miza Sayyid Muhammad goes on and visits Baha'u'llah, whom at that time was in Baghdad. Baha'u'llah's innocence, Miza Agajan, which is a famous um, person in the faith, um, but he um, um, goes out of the faith later on, has described the uncle of the Bab's visit and circumstances which led to the revelation of the Kitab Iqan or the Book of Certitude through a tablet by Baha'u'llah under his name. One day, Haji say, I have to say that um, a lot of tablets uh, written by Baha'u'llah is under the name of Miza Agajan. One day Haji Sayyid Jawad Karbalai went to Baha'u'llah and informed him that the two uncles of the Bab, having visited the holy shrines in Najaf and Karbala, were now in Baghdad and would be returning home soon. Having ascertained from Haji that he had not discussed the faith with them, Baha'u'llah lovingly admonished him for not being engaged in the teaching of the codes. He then instructed him to invite the two brothers to come to his presence. The next day, Haji arrived with the uncle of the Bab, Haji Mizza Muhammad. The youngest brother did not come. The utterances of Baha'u'llah uplifted and overwhelmed the Bab's uncle as he sat in his presence. He requested clarification of the truth of the Bab's message, bearing in mind that in his view, some of the traditions of Islam concerning the promised Qa'im were apparently not fulfilled by his nephew. Baha'u'llah asked him to go home and after careful consideration to make a list of all the questions and traditions which had puzzled him. The following day, Haji Mizza Sayyid Muhammad arrived with his questions. Within the span of two days and two nights, the Kitab Iran, a lengthy epistle, over 200 pages dealing with all his questions was revealed by Baha'u'llah. In those early days, this book was known as Risale Kha, the epistle to the uncle. But later, Baha'u'llah designated it as the Kitab Iran, the book of certitude. Among the papers which are preserved, sorry, I have to move it so you can see, um, in the family of the Afnan are the questions which Sayyid Muhammad presented to Baha'u'llah. They are written on two sheets in his own hand and on the four headings, all dealing with coming of the promised Qa'im. The sincerity of uncle of the Bab is, it's of the Bab is seeking the truth, is evident in his, in his questions. Kitab Iran dispelled every doubt that Haji Musa Sayyid Muhammad had harbored in his mind. In his will, written years later, he declared his faith, acknowledged the authenticity of the message of the Bab and Baha'u'llah, and identified himself as a follower of these twin manifestations of God. As to Haji Mizar Sayyid Hassan Ali, the youngest uncle of the Bab, some years later, through efforts of his wife's brother, also accepted the faith and remained steadfast throughout his life. Indeed, all the family of the Bab, including his mother, his wife, his uncles, and their children, designated as Afnan in the Baha'i faith, embraced the faith. This was actually prophesied by the Bab himself. The original copy of the Kitab Iran, which Haji Mizza Sayyid Muhammad received, was transcribed by Abdul Baha, the son of Baha'u'llah, who was then 18 years of age. For many years, this original copy of the Kitab Iqan remained with the family of Haji Mizar Sayyid Muhammad until in 1948, his grand granddaughter, Fatima Khanum Afnan, presented it to Shoghi Effendi, the guardian of the faith. This book is now kept in the Baha'i International Archives on Mount Carmel, I found. Now 
Now, going to the importance of the Kitab e Iran, Shori Effendi, the guardian of the faith, translated this book superbly into English and had described it in these words. For most among the priceless treasures cast for from the blowing ocean of Baha'u'llah's revelation ranks the Kitab e Iran, a modern Persian prose of a style at once original, chaste and vigorous, and remarkably lucid, both cogent in argument and matchless in its irresistible eloquence. This book, setting forth in outline the grand redemptive scheme of God, copies a position unequal by any work in the entire range of Baha'i literature, except the Kitab Aghdas, Baha'u'llah's most holy book. Until the Kitab Iqan was revealed, the significance of the missions of all the prophets of God, the purpose of their revelations, and the true meaning of their words had remained undisclosed. According to Daniel, the words close up and sealed till time of the end is a prophecy to revelation of Kitab Iqan, which removed all the seals from the holy books of the past religions. Kitab Iran is the best tool for bringing a new seeker to the Baha'i faith. And instead of going advance to the proofs of the authenticity of the message of the Bab, Baha'u'llah first speaks of the other prophets of God, their lives, their sufferings, and demonstrates the truth of their missions and describes the common features of their faiths. In this way, he shows that it is possible to know the last manifestation if one knows the qualities and attributes of one who appeared in the former age. He also shows the unity, progressive revelation, oneness of mission, and the oneness of the source, God. The Kitab Iran was enabled a vast number of people from various backgrounds to understand the truth of their own religions, and hence a step forward believing in the Bab and Baha'u'llah as the latest manifestation of God. Now, the Kitab Iran has been revealed in two parts. Baha'u'llah relies heavily on quotations from Quran, the traditions of Islam, and the Bible to state his arguments for proof of mission of God. In the opening paragraph to the book, he makes recognition of truth conditional upon man's detachment from this world, cleanse ears from idle talk, their minds from vain imaginings, their hearts from worldly affection, their eyes from that which perisheth, that they should put their trust in God's hand, that way they will be made worthy of receiving divine knowledge, understanding, and recognition. It is difficult to go through the themes of this book in a short talk like this. So I would try to do as much as I can. To grasp full understanding of the book, one must go through many hours of reading and cross-referencing to other sources. So here I will only go through headings of major themes of this book to show some, to some extent. Now, uh, as I said, uh, the book is made into two parts. So I've structured my presentation in that way too. Uh, major themes of the Kitab Iran, part one. A reason for man's opposition to the prophets of God. Baha'u'llah dwells on the history of the prophets of the past and explains reasons for man's opposition to each other. He describes the history of Noah, Hud, Saleh, Abraham, Moses, Christ, and Muhammad. And then I have a quotation from the book, ponder upon these things. What could have caused such contention and conflict? Why is it that the advent of every true manifestation of God had been accompanied by such strife and tumult, by such tyranny and upheaval? Baha'u'llah then enumerates several causes for man's rejection of manifestations of God. He, for example, says, masses in every age have blindly followed their clergy who have for the most part opposed the new prophet of God for their own selfish reasons. He condemns the divines of the past religions for their ignorance 
and lack of insight in the cause of God. Another cause of refusal is the new messenger brings new teachings, abrogates the laws of the past and establishes a new order. Another reason for rejection is that in every religion, certain signs are given for the advent of the next manifestation of God. Because man has expected to a literal fulfillment of such signs, hence have failed to understand their true meanings and have rejected the new faith. He extensively goes through signs of the coming of Christ and his reject rejection by people. No, sorry. Now, I'm going to the interpretations of symbolic terms. Howler explains that so, at some length, the true meaning of the words such as operation, sun, moon, stars, heaven, clouds, angels, cleaving of the earth, cleaving of heaven, the day of resurrection. And I've selected a quote for you here. By the term sun and moon, mentioned in the writings of the prophets of God, is not meant solely the sun and moon of the visible universe. Nay, rather manifold are the meanings they have intended for these terms. In every instance, they have attached to them a particular significance. Now he goes through a, a number of other meanings. For example, son of truth, who raised from the day spring of ancient glory. The sun and moon, Terms are referred to the divines of the former dispensations. The sun and moon refer to prayer and fasting. The term refers to laws and teachings established in each dispensation. Sages who foretold the coming of the new messengers. Angels refer to holy souls. Clouds signify annulment of laws, abrogation of former dispensations, repeal of the old rituals and customs. The, or, and also cloud means the appearance of the immortal beauty in the image of mortal man. Now he goes also to describe further reasons for man's rejections of the prophets. Um, one of them is for blind following of the religious leaders, condition that man must cleanse his heart from all earthly things, true meaning of corruption and distortion of holy texts, Divine from the fountain of divine inspiration and satanic knowledge, two different knowledges, a reflection of vain and obscure thoughts, being satanic knowledge, tests which are associated with manifestations of God, such as change of Bible by, from Jerusalem to Mecca by Muhammad uh, at the time of a prayer, annulment of death by stoning law by Muhammad. Moses being guilty of homicide, the circumstances of Christ's birth. And then he also goes, because um, he um, hasn't declared yet, but he wants to clarify that this could happen to the Bobbies as well. Then he extensively admonishes the followers of the Bob, and I've selected a quote from it. Um, and now we beseech the people of the Bayan, all the learned, the sages, the divines, and witnesses among them, not to forget the wishes and admonitions revealed in their book. Let them all at all times fix their gaze upon the essentials of his cause, least when he who is the quintessence of truth, the most inmost reality of all things, the source of all light is made manifest. They cling onto certain passages of the book and inflict upon him that which was inflicted in the dispensation of the Quran. Now, um, then um, we have a second part in this book, and then it's very similar, but in different nature. Um, so I'll go through major themes of that second part. Um, the first thing was nature of God and his manifestation. And I've um, kind of titled these things because it's difficult to bring a, such a book into um, such a short time. Ahawla writes about the nature of manifestation and his relationship to God and man. For example, a quotation is, to every discerning and illumined heart, it is evident that God, the unknowable, 
essence, the divine being, is immensely exalted beyond every human attribute, such as corporal existence, ascent and descent, egress and regress. Far be it from his glory that human tongue should adequately recount his praise, or that human heart comprehend his fathomless mystery. He is and had ever been veiled in the ancient eternity of his essence and will remain in his reality everlastingly hidden from the sight of men. Now, God's purpose in sending his manifestations is to educate the souls of men and endure with grace all created things. He also talks about primal will, which is the divine will and reality that appears in every manifestation of God. Um, he then talks about sovereignty of the prophet. Manifestations of God have absolute sovereignty over that which is in heaven and on earth. Then he compares the ascendancy and creative power of the manifestations of God in contrast to that of the fleeting sovereignty of earthly kings. Ahola then dwells on the sufferings which were heaped upon the prophets of God and his chosen ones. He describes that the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, which shed a glorious luster upon the fate of Islam. He also signifies significance of well-known words, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and people taking this literally. Reviving power of the new manifestation of God on people and the earth. These are the titles of the passages um, in the Kitab. Going further, the meaning of life, death, and resurrection. Once again, Baha'u'llah reveals the true meaning of these terms that are used in the holy books of the former religions. True meanings of life, death, resurrection, trumpet blast, paradise, and hell. By the there's some quotations here. By the terms life and death spoken in the scriptures is intended the life of faith and the death of he says, Jesus said, you must be born again. Story of the death of the father of one of the disciples of Jesus. And when Christ says, let the dead bury the dead. Referencing Quran to the day when man will attain the presence of God. The true meaning of day of resurrection. Trumbled blast, time of a new revelation. Paradise and hell, nearness to God and his manifestations and rejection of them no literal physical existence. Now, um, another thing that uh, people used to reject the manifestations is the veil of knowledge. He goes extensively on this. Several references in the second part of the Kitab Iran to the divines and religious leaders who through their so-called learning have hindered the people from turning to the manifestation of God. And then he goes about the truth, the station of a true seeker, a seeker and true knowledge. But all my brother, when a true seeker determines to take the step of search in the path leading to the knowledge of ancient of days, he must before all else cleanse and purify his heart, which is the seat of the revelation of the inner mysteries of God, from the obscuring dust of the acquired knowledge and illusions of embodiments of satanic fancy. Then he says, that seeker should also regard backbiting as a gross error and keep himself aloof from its dominion, inasmuch as backbiting quenches the light of the heart and extinguishes the life of the soul. Also he says, only when the lamp of search, of earnest striving, of longing desire, of passionate devotion, of fervid love, of rapture and ecstasy is kindled in the seeker's heart and the breeze of his loving kindness is wafted upon his soul, will the darkness of error be dispelled, the mist of doubt and misgivings be dis dissipated, and the lights of knowledge and certitude envelop his being. After those things, he goes through proofs of the Baal. 
once again, Baha'u'llah refers back to all the manifestations of God here, and that the greatest proof of a prophet is his own self, just as the proof of the son is the son himself. Next, he points that proof of the manifestation, a manifestation of God is the revelation of the word of God. Baha'u'llah shows how Muhammad on more than one occasion pointed to the Quran as a proof of his mission. In the beginning of his book, he says, no doubt is there about this book. It is a guidance unto the God fearing. He, the divine being and unknowable essence had himself testified that this book is beyond all doubt and uncertainty, the guide of all mankind until the day of resurrection. <clears throat> Sorry. Study of the lives of the founder of all religions demonstrate that the word of God is the most effective instrument by which the prophet creates a new civilization. It penetrates into the heart of people and becomes the spirit of the age. Ahaullah mentions that some seekers uh, were eminent individuals of Islamic faith whom recognized the Bab and accepted his faith. So not every clergy uh, rejected the faith. Um, and he says in a quotation, in this most splendid dispensation, however, this most mighty sovereignty, a number of illumined divines of men of consummate learning, of doctors of mature wisdom have attained unto his court, drunk the cup of his divine presence and been invested with the honor of his most excellent favor. They have renounced for the sake of the beloved, the board and all that there is. Baha'u'llah then mentions some of these eminent followers of the Bab, such as Mullah Hussein, who is the first person to believe in him. And a few of the letters of living, or how much you know about the letters of living, there were 18 um, Baha'i uh, and Babis that by themselves, um, discovered the fate of Bob. Baha'u'llah then follows um, this with passages of tribute to the Bob. The constancy of eternal beauty in proclaiming the fate of God, young and tender of age. The cause he revealed was contrary to the desire of all the people of earth. Steadfastness in proclaiming the fate of God not afraid of anyone, regardless of its consequences. Baha'u'llah also reflects on similarity of situation of opposition to Muhammad when he declared his cause and that of the Bab. He also points out the fulfillment of all prophecies recorded in the scriptures by the Bab, particularly those of Islam. Now, at the end of the book, uh, he talks for about anticipation of his own revelation. In many passages, he alludes to himself and his quote. The passage that I've uh, selected are these, quintessence of truth, the innermost reality, the source of all life, the king of divine might, the bed of heaven. By God, this bed of heaven, now dwelling upon the dust, can besides these melodies utter a myriad sounds <clears throat> and is able, apart from these utterances, to unfold innumerable mysteries. Every single, single note of its unpronounced utterances is immeasurably exalted above all that had already been revealed and immensely glorified beyond that which had streamed from this pen. Let the future disclose the hour when the brides of inner meaning will at a decreed, as decreed by the will of God, hasten forth, unveiled out of their mystic mansions and manifest themselves in the ancient realm of being. We know now that Baha'u'llah has revealed many tablets after that week. In some of the passages, he anticipates the opposition he would meet 
and the suffering <clears throat> he would endure at the hands of enemies from within the Babi community and from outside. In these days, he also says, <laughs> such odors of jealousy are diffused that I swear by the educator of all beings, visible and invisible, from the beginning of the foundation of the world, though it had no beginning until the present day, such malice, envy, and hate have in no wise appeared, nor will they ever be witnessed in the future. When a number of people who have never inhaled fragrance of justice have raised the stand of sedition and have leagued themselves against us. On every side, he witnesses the menace of the spheres and in all directions, he recognizes the shafts of their arrows. <clears throat> now, the authority to which she speaks, the tone of many of his remarks and allusions he makes to himself are indicative of <clears throat> his divine station and his impending declaration. For example, <clears throat> sorry, um, in a passage he says, the universe is pregnant with these manifold bounties, awaiting that the hour when the effect of, of its unseen gifts will be made manifest in this world. When they are languishing and so a thirst will attain the living Gosar, a river in paradise of their well-beloved and the erring wanderer lost in the wheels of remoteness and nothingness will enter the tabernacle of life and attain reunion <clears throat> with his heart's desire. Now, as I mentioned in that book, um, Mr. Adibi Tahirzadeh, in his book, The Revelation of Baha'u'llah states about the <clears throat> Kitab Iran in this way. <clears throat> The Kitab Iran is like an ocean. It contains the innermost reality of religion and its depths are unfathomable. One may read it many times, yet each time new truth and new visions manifest themselves before the eye. So um, you can see that um, this um, book has got many details that many one has to read many times in order to grasp its full understanding. I hope I've shown to you to some degree um, the extent of this book, and I hope <clears throat> that you guys would go and read it. Uh, it's a, such an important book. So Chris Taylor, I think I've finished my book, uh, my presentation, so. I think you're- thank, uh, thank you, thank you, thanks for that. There's a lot to take in for me personally, um, uh, but I'm always learning. I guess we'll open for some questions now. So if anyone has any questions. I see one hand. We have any questions. Unmute. Thank you. Uh, it's unmuted. Uh, thank you, Amajan. This is really, uh, uh, you, you've done a great job, really, in presenting the, such a heavy book, a mystical book of Baha'u'llah as you say, 200 pages of it in, in about half an hour. Uh, this is really a great task to do. Uh, yeah, it is indeed. Say, this is a very important, uh, really, uh, writings of Baha'u'llah, where he answers many questions, uh, a mystical questions, uh, mind-bubbling, mind-wandering questions of this cousin of, uh, sorry, the uncle of the Bab. Uh, so you've done a great job. Thank you very much for that, really. There are so many 
uh, aspects signal. to this book. <clears throat> really, one has to do, as you said, Mr. Adib Tars, as it says, you have to read this book many, many times. And every time you read, you, you gain a new understanding and you find a new, um, really, uh, answer to the questions that we, one might have. So thank you very much. Just a comment. Thank you. Uh, I just have to say that um, Baha'u'llah described many um, prophecies in that book that a lot of uh, followers of other religions are expecting to happen. And uh, many of the followers of other religions uh, take those symbols uh, very literally. And he describes why they're not literal and they have meanings. Mm -hmm. And why um, uh, these things have been um, pulled into a symbolic form. Uh, the reason is to separate the good from evil, um, separate person that goes and search for the truth and the person that just follows. Yes, um, uh, thank you. Um, and this is uh, very, even for Baha'i, it is <laughs> too much to grasp many, many details in it. And uh, this being an interfaith forum, uh, many friends who are not familiar with Baha'i faith and uh, um, maybe a little bit daunting. But nevertheless, uh, there are uh, key things that you mentioned, um, which are of some importance to friends here. Initially, you mentioned uh, that the kitab e was a reference uh, given by Daniel. Um, what was, uh, can you elaborate on this? Yeah, sure. Um, if you look at the, um, the Old um, Testament, the New Testament, uh, Quran, um, and these holy scriptures, <clears throat> many of them have got symbolic writings in them that um, the meanings uh, have been um, um, unrecognizable by people, by even the clergies of those faiths. Um, so um, these symbols, I think Daniel says that these symbols um, are, have um, special meanings and, and those have been sealed until the end of the time. Now, for example, in Bible, um, it, it says that uh, as, as I read, um, as, as, as was in one of the quotations that you um, selected, that the stars and the sun and the moon will fall on earth. Now, if we take that literally, it's meaningless with the science of today, yes. because us and the moon um, are much bigger than the earth, but not the moon, the sun and the stars are much bigger than earth. Many stars are so huge, and as you look at astronomy, it's mm -hmm. huge that some of them are bigger than our solar system in size. Now, how could that be taken literally? So obviously it has got meaning, it's got symbolic meanings. And as I said, um, these um, terms refer into falling of the clergy, of the well-learned people that are known at the time of the new revelation, because they're not following uh, the truth of their faith. And as a result, they will fall. And another question is that um, and in Kitabi, again, the Book of Certitude, most of the references are, as you mentioned, is about the uh, Bible and the Quran. Is yeah. it of course the question that was uh, raised by Bob uncle were related to those? Yes. Yeah. That there are other religious people, um, Hindus especially, <laughs> I'm from the Hindu background and there may be there are Buddhist and other religious people. And yeah. There's no reference to other religions. Very, very little because um, the uh, uncle of Bob was a Muslim. 
And uh, if you look at the historical environment, it's uh, more uh, to do with um, Christians and uh, Muslims of the time. So um, questions that the uncle of the Bab put to Baha'u'llah were really those traditions of Islam and uh, sayings in Quran and some from Bible. Mm -hmm. Baha'u'llah was answering those questions that he put to him. So uh, this book um, refers mostly to the traditions of Islam and Christianity. But having said that, um, Abdul Baha um, goes extensively um, onto um, sayings of other religions as well. And other religions are waiting for um, a new coming, a new revelation, most all of them. Um, so, um, so in Baha'i faith, uh, a description of all these um, forthcoming revelations uh, are described and relationship to the previous um, religions. And actually Baha'u'llah goes through a number of old um, manifestations like Abraham, Buddha, you know, um, uh, Hood, um, Moses, Christ, uh, to describe their life and the conflict. And the purpose of this uh, book is to show <clears throat> that uh, at the time of every new manifestation that comes, there is conflict, there is rejection, there is persecution. Whereas the light of that, uh, that fate uh, lusters, glorifies, expands, um, and increases in, on, on, on it. Thank you. I think there are many questions probably many people want to ask. <laughs> can, I please, can I please ask? Um, you are all scholars in the subject. I'm a Catholic, so I know very little about the Baha'i faith. But I know about this book, Kitaki. Kita what do you call Kitaki? Um, yeah. yeah. And I think the way you explain for me tonight is just show me that the book is very relevant to our situation at the moment, especially when we talk about COVID-19. Uh, for me, I mean, with my uh, listening to radio and social media, it's just like the end of time, the day of resurrections. And because so many people die in all different countries. So I'm thinking, according to the Bible, then Christ will come at the day, the end of time, or something, uh, we just think about it. Until Christ will come, the sun, the stars will fall. So it's already, we have fire, we have flood for the past few years, and we have COVID. So now, what I'm saying is, your book, the book that you described, the book is a guide of all mankind until the day of resurrection. So this is the time that I think that book is very relevant. And that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, in your vocabulary that you describe, with the, um, the nouns, when you say holy people, we also talk about enlightened ones, the chosen one, the prophets of God, the blessed one, the holy divine manifestations. So what I'm saying is, they all suffering, they all have missions, and they all have faith, and they all represent God. So what I'm saying for me, because you mentioned about astronomy, the, the first astronaut, when he came to the moon, and he worked on the moon, his name is Neil Armstrong, and he's talking about peace. He, he got a flag, an American flag, and he said, bring peace. So he said, for me, it's like peace for the heaven and for the earth. So for me, he looked like an enlightened one. So how are we going to, you know, like talk in general sense? Because I'm not going to do in special, you know, like uh, explanation, but we just say, for me, astronauts, they are enlightened ones. So what I'm saying that they, they do connect heaven and earth and they do what you call 
they not detach themselves from the worthy attachment because they do bring messages. Well, uh, you know, Baha'u'llah in this book um, explains that <clears throat> we shouldn't take um, this, the words such as resurrection uh, um, literally. Um, he describes what their symbolic meanings are. Uh, for example, in his book, he says that revelation is the timing of a new manifestation of God. Um, when um, people are asked to select the new faith or reject it. And if they select it, their life is given to them. Like when Christ says, let the dead bury the dead, he means that those people that are alive, but they haven't taken the new faith, they are like a dead. And as a result, he said that let the dead bury the dead. Um, so um, very many of these words in the scriptures are symbolic and we have to find the true meanings of them. Like, as I said, how could we have a star fall on earth? It's impossible physically, yeah? So it has meaning, it has symbolic meaning. And we have to find those meanings. And this book, is there to show those symbolic, uh, symbolic um, uh, references and their true meanings. Now, as I said, as we said, um, when Armstrong uh, walked on the moon, he realized that F is one, one man, one place, one man, one mankind. So that's why he said, "Let peace there be," because at that time, as you might know, Cuba was there. Uh, Russians were trying to put nuclear bombs on Cuba, and there was many, many conflicts. And we still have those conflicts today. So um, it's a gradual process. Yes, the only thing that I see is not, like, not relevant in the book that we learned tonight, that let we say COVID people who suffer by COVID and die, thousand, a thousand, a thousand million of them. So the end of time, the day of resurrection, and we're supposed to see Christ come with the trumpets and with the angels to take them to heaven, the souls, the holy souls to heaven. But in real life, you see all the church and cathedral closed, all the pagoda, you know, temples are closed. And so, Whatever the Bible, the Catholic Bible said, when the end of time, Jesus will come and take all the holy souls to heaven. Well, at the moment, I'm still waiting for the angels with a trumpet to go and take the holy souls to heaven. Yeah, if, you, if, you take, if you take these physically, it's meaningless. Because, for example, if when, when Christ says that I will come on, on the cloud, now the signs today says that the F is a spherical. So if he comes on the cloud, what about the people on the other side of the F? They <laughs> not see him. <laughs> so, so these have meanings. They don't, uh, they're not physical appearances. And when he says, I'm, I come on a, on a cloud, he really means that I will come in the temple of man, like any other man, but I have the power of God in me. Yeah, so that's, all these terms have meanings. They're not physical. And as to the COVID, uh, me being a medical science person, uh, I don't take it as uh, a persecution thing. Uh, every so hundred years, such a thing comes. Like, for example, uh, at the time of Abdul Baha in 1900s, uh, we had the uh, Spanish flu, which took more people um, than the, the, the world war of the time, the first world war. Um, so you see, um, humanity, uh, of course, gets these uh, commotions, these difficulties, and the purpose of these difficulties is bringing the whole of humanity together. I think COVID is a tool by God to bring the humanity together. 
But he okay. has got his hand up. Mm. Could I, I say that. something, Priscilla, or someone else is speaking? Can I speak? Yes. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> Priscilla. Um, um, uh, 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 doctor, uh, you know, you, you gave us an extensive uh, uh, teaching, in a way, of um, Baha'i faith. Um, what I could see as a, as a Christian clergy, uh, who I lived all my life as a Christian, um, 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 I've studied uh, other religions as well, but not Baha'i faith. Uh, only now I'm getting to know uh, the emphasis. Um, what I see is that everyone lives by faith. You know, I'm very open to other faiths, but when it comes to uh, teaching a Baha'i faith, uh, I can see in your presentation, in, your, in this book and the dissertation, the taking from different, uh, the two main religions that you were talking from Christianity and, and Islam, uh, then, you know, trying to sort of rationalize or reflect on both religions and bringing out a very, very, very deep meaning of life, all right. But you cannot, in a way, uh, I would not uh, discredit another religious faith uh, because you live by faith, I live by my faith. And uh, I believe in uh, Christ, uh, uh, his birth, uh, life, suffering, death, and resurrection. And I believe in the resurrection of, of, of everyone that uh, he will raise on that day. Um, so that you might not take it literally, but Christians will take it literally. You cannot simply sort of say, um, no, this is all, it never happens. Science doesn't allow that to happen or to comprehend that. But, um, uh, I would say to any Christian uh, radicals who might say like what you are saying, uh, is that, you know, it's like an agnostic way of looking at a particular faith. So I'm a, I was a little bit taken back listening to the way that you put it. Although you are a great scholar, you have studied into the into Baha'i faith, which I very much appreciate. But when it comes to other religious faiths. And I will say that it might be the best way to allow other faiths to have their own um, journey in life. At the end of their life, whatever happens, happens. Or beyond that, whatever happens, happens. No one can, no one can even say, even Baha'i faith cannot say fully um, what exactly life, um, uh, whether spiritual death and spiritual resurrection. But even, even body resurrection, life be, beyond this. So that's, how, that's where I am at the moment. I don't know what others are thinking about, but yeah, appreciating all of uh, your, uh, your research dissertation, uh, I would say that, you know, I will prefer to have my own faith and study other faiths and journey with everyone and uh, hold on to that truth of peace and justice and unity of all religions. Yeah, John, um, my intention wasn't to disregard uh, the other faiths or their teachings. Um, what I was trying to uh, explain in uh, my presentation is that Baha'u'llah describes those symbolic things, and then he gives meaning to those symbolic things. Um, and then if you take resurrection, for example, literally, um, scientifically is impossible, okay? Uh, you, we have to, a seeker of new faith and new understanding has to have justice in his understanding or his um, um, grasping of things. Like um, when, when in Bible it says uh, stars will fall on earth, uh, do you take that literally? Um, and then we know that science says that this is impossible. So a lot of these things, have symbolic meaning. And if you, if you look at any Baha'i, um, a, a Baha'i, a true Baha'i is a person 
that believes in the past religions as well. For example, I am a Christian before I'm a Baha'i. I'm a Muslim before being a Baha'i. I'm a Buddhist before I'm a Baha'i. So belief in Baha'i faith does not disregard belief in the past religions. The past religions are progression of revelation of God. And it's like a student going through different years of study. If you are in first year, when you go on to second year, you don't disregard what you learned in the first year. You kind of accompany that understanding with you when you go to the next year of study. Now, um, today is the time when humanity has to come together. And all the past revelations have foretold for coming of two people at this time. Now you have to go and look for why it is this time, yeah? And look at the keys in the older scriptures. And um, for example, Baha'u'llah uh, goes through uh, in this book and uh, refers to the timing of coming of the Bab compared to the coming of, uh, um, of Muhammad. And he says that, for example, the disconnected letters in Quran, if you look at Quran at the beginning of some verses, there are some disconnected letters. And using a, a language of uh, words into numbers, which is called abjad, he describes that the letters refer to these 100 and 1,267 years. Um, and these, this refers to the coming of the Bab in reference to coming of Muhammad. So what he's trying to do is saying that, all look at the old uh, manifestations of their, their life and what happened to them at their time of coming. And you can see that similar things happen. Religious leaders of the time reject the faith because of their selfish desires. Not everyone, but many of them, yeah? You might be a true clergy of Christianity. I don't know. You have, you have, uh, you have I don't know your innate being. So, um, so what he's saying is that many of these clergies, because of their desires of leadership, they reject. Um, and it's very difficult for a person that is a clergy and has got followers to leave his powers and go to a new faith. It's very difficult, uh, I accept that. But he says that look at the history and see what has happened in the past. Like for example, at the time of coming of Christ, Many Jewish clergies were against him. You know the history better than me. I don't have to describe it to you. But these things happened in the past. And he says that if you look at the past, you will see these things have happened. As a result, when you look at today, you can see the similarity. And he describes similarity of conflicts against the Bab with the conflicts against the Muhammad because Muhammad also lived in a place where there were Jews and Christians there. And the clergies of Jews and Christians at the time of coming of Muhammad, they rejected him. So these are all complementary. You have to take it together, look at the meanings of the terms. Um, I, I don't want to get into it. Going, going on the resurrection, yeah. what's yeah. the meaning of people coming back in this world? Um, Baha'u'llah descri describes it like this. If you open a shell and you see a pearl in it, once you open it, it would have a pearl or it would not have a pearl, yeah? So what's the point of closing the shell again and bringing it back again to see a, a pearl in there? So uh, one also has to believe in the other world, the world after this world. The, if he said the world is only this world, it becomes meaningless. We are, sh we are very much in here for a short period. 
and life is beyond that. God has created many worlds and the human soul goes through these different worlds. Um, so to me, resurrection, um, as Baha'u'llah describes it, is the time of the new manifestation of God. And it has happened every time a new manifestation of God comes on him. Yeah, resurrection does have other, other uh, deep meaning, but the same word that you use, progression of religious thinking. Um, I have been a clergy for 46 years now, just retired. So I have served in Sri Lanka and in Australia for 35 years. I have worked with all the other religious groups as well, including all the um, um, many um, uh, uh, Christian um, uh, denominations. The, the basic understanding that we have is that from the Old Testament time, there are a lot of metaphorical uh, words that come, symbolic words that come, particularly when the prophets talk. But we believe that the Old Testament, that is the Jewish uh, um, book that we usually write in our prayers, you know, the Jewish one, well, it's actually Old Testament in our, in our Holy Bible. And the fulfillment we find is Christ himself. We believe that the Messiah, the, 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 the long-awaited uh, Messiah, the anointed one, was Jesus himself. And in him was revealed the very nature of God, even the love of God. And then uh, yeah, the, the suffering and the death of Jesus was real, is historical. And the resurrection for the disciples at that time was real. That was against the scientific understanding of resurrection. Some sects in Christianity don't believe in resurrection because they don't, they can't, do, they can't even fathom how a, a man who was dead rises after three days. But the eyewitnesses and, and St. Paul later on who confronted the risen Lord talk, I mean, proclaim the good news that Jesus of Nazareth who died on the cross, rose again on the third day, appeared to his disciples and the women and appeared to them and, and to Thomas uh, finally who doubted. And then he, 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 was, uh, he was raised um, and he ascended to heaven and he said, yeah, I will come back. So I believe in the resurrection because Jesus rose from the dead. I believe in the resurrection of the, the believers because, because of the resurrection of Jesus. So that's where I come from. That's where I think all the Christians come from. But who, how can Baha'i religion make judgment on a faith like Christianity? As I said, they don't that, make any judgment. This is the way, is the way to interpret. That's my problem. Yeah, as, as I said before, we don't make any judgment. Uh, uh, Ahmad. Yeah. Um, this, <laughs> this is a forum we, where we collectively trying to understand the, yeah. the uh, common foundations of the religion is not that uh, anyone is trying to establish what he believes or what he says is true. In, yes. in, in your, uh, in your uh, quotation presentation, you uh, uh, mentioned the requisite for a true seeker. And uh, I don't think we, or at least, many of the Baha'is here, we have not satisfied 100% that requirements. So we cannot say uh, what I believe or what I say is right. This is an independent uh, investigation. Therefore, uh, the, you have uh, given a background of this story and the book. It's up to the friends to read it and to make uh, out of it. And the other thing is that if we, the Baha'i should understand if you, if you read carefully the writings of Baha'u'llah, there's only one religion. The faith of God is only one. Yes. Yeah. Angeless, eternal in the past, eternal in the future, right? So, uh, we, this is, you know, we go gradually, little by little, 
So let us leave this uh, um, discussion about the interpretation of um, real selection or any, anything. But uh, Bahá'u'lláh has tried to explain these things, but my understanding or your understanding may not be the right understanding. So let anyone um, uh, tries to read it and find out. But our friend uh, Kuntz, uh, Jaspal Singh, he wanted to say something and I have to interfere because um, our friend um, Christella, she has to take a call and she has gone. Therefore, I have taken it over. So I'll ask uh, Jaspal to give his comment. Can I, can I just say that uh, at no time I was trying to uh, disregard the other faiths. I was just trying to say what Baha'u'llah describes in this book. Yeah, The other thing is that he says a true seeker has got some must have some conditions in order to understand these things. One is have a, a eye or insight, yeah, an ear that hears correctly. Um, a, a person that doesn't take his knowledge as the balance of everything. It has to look at, look at things justice, justicely, yeah. And he says that look at the past events in history of mankind and learn from it. Now, I, I got C, uh, Elizabeth uh, and Sivalingam. No, uh, well, before, before that, uh, uh, Jaspal Singh wanted to say something. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. We, uh, we uh, every religion believes that God is one and he knows everything. He sees everything and this whole world is all manifestation of God and he created this world, he creates every human being. So we all human beings are creations of one God and God also is a big judge. He makes judgment not on any favoritism, not on, on any uh, undue regard for anybody. He does justice on what he says. Rather, he make, makes judgments on our actions, daily actions. So, because he sees our actions, so those people who do, do good actions on this earth, become automatically favorites of God and become near to God without good actions. If somebody thinks I will get some space in God's kingdom, I think it is all falsehood. Real good actions done on this earth by human beings like love, compassion, service to humanity, good things for humanity, service to the humanity, my neighbors, my family, my country, my neighborhood, and all people on this earth, if I'm doing good service to them, then God will really reserve a place for me. And if I'm happy on this earth, if I have satisfied life on this earth, and I live in peace, only then I can expect that I will live in peace when I go leave this world. If the life was a sorrow for me, for me, if I was an unhappy man on this earth, and then I cannot expect that I will live in paradise when I leave this earth. So, we can judge which place we will get when we leave. We can judge from what type of life now is, present life, what type of life now is. Uh, only that will decide my fate when I go from here. I, I shouldn't live any such false promises, anything like that. If I follow this fate, if I follow this fate, then I will become, no, that's all falsehood. Uh, I, I don't comment on of anybody who who make who will be making claims like that, but uh, this is my feeling. 
and this is what my religion also believes that good actions are the best things that take near to God. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Yeah, Baha'u'llah says, Baha says that the purpose of life here for mankind is service to humanity. We have to do that. That's our purpose in this life and recognition of God and his manifestations. Yes, uh, true. Uh, and uh, who, uh, Elizabeth wanted to say something, and then um, Siva, and then Tracy. Thank um, you. Siva, okay, Siva, no question. Okay, uh, Elizabeth, and after that, Tracy. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for your wonderful talk tonight. Oh, my goodness. My uh, Persian is not very good, I'm sorry. But uh, I did enjoy your talk. And I answer you with mercy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but it's very interesting to realize, having come from a Christian background, and at a very, very early age of a child, I was aware that there was a God. And I knew nothing, nothing about the Baha'i faith until some 30 or 40 years later. But my belief was checked when I was teaching Sunday school and the minister came in and he was reading out the parables. And when we came to the parable of the vineyard, that was when I realised there had been a change because in the parable of the vineyard, they had killed all the, the, the workers on the vineyard. It, they killed the son who, who was on the vineyard, worked in the vineyard. But then I said, well, who, who owned the vineyard? The owner of the vineyard was still alive. He was still the owner of the vineyard. So I went home and I said to my husband, I think the return of Christ has come. It was as if a door opened. And from that moment on, I went looking. And I found the Baha'i faith through spiritual means, nothing else, nobody. I never met anybody. And I prayed to God and I asked, and I, I must admit, I think I have a good relationship with the fellow upstairs. But I want to point out to people that God owns us all. God gives us life. God takes us back. That which belongs to God goes back to God. If you read the uh, per, um, Gospels and that, there's an ever-living life. We believe in eternal life. And how it is described to us in one generation or one dispensation to another dispensation depends on our education. We no longer need in this day and age, somebody to tell us what to think. And it is about the spiritual aspect of humanity that Baha'u'llah talks about, that Jesus talked about. And Muhammad and um, Krishna, they all talked about this world and they were all manifestations. And I just hope that people think simply about it rather than think too deeply. Because if you get too deep, then you become detached from God. We must put our whole trust in God. And I do not believe for one minute that I was led astray by becoming a Baha'i. But I did learn a lot more about my Christian faith having read what the howler wrote with loving greetings to all of you may you study hard and think hard and ask ask god just ask like i would ask you thank you you know as you say um the every manifest every religion has got two aspects the spiritual and the social yeah spiritual aspects if you look carefully Every religion that has come, it says the same thing. Mm. Christ says, love your neighbor. Yeah. Baha says, love your mankind. Muhammad says the same thing. Buddha says the same thing. Yeah. 
yes. social yes, yes. aspects are different. And those come at relevance to the time of the coming. Yes. So, uh, you know, religion is really one. The yes. spirit of it is one. All religions are one, as you say too. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, well, that Tracy. Oh, thank you for your um, interesting talk. Um, I didn't know that much about what the um, Baha'i um, teachings were, so that was interesting to learn. But there was a um, something um, in one of the um, things that you were talking about, living with the creation, and. Um, I can't tell you exactly what you said, um, but I've just wondered, what does that mean? You know, what is it, how, how do you interpret living with the creation? You mean creator or the creation? Creation, it was talking about living with all the creation um, in one of your slides. Yeah, um, I don't recall it, but... Um... Our concepts is, I mean, the Baha'i concept is that we have to live in harmony with our creation, the, you know, environment, the world. And that probably was trying to explain that. But right. really, it's um, knowing the existence of God, knowing that He sends manifestations every so often, and knowing that the purpose of life is recognizing God. And uh, the purpose is to serve humanity. These are the vital things, all important concepts. Yes. Um, okay, thank you. Any, anyone else, um, those who have not spoken? <laughs> Pauline, Sachin. Um. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ahmed. Just, just a brief comment that I um, that that uh, one of the Baha'i teachings is that religions have they're not superseded. They don't. They're not like a, an old class which yes. is no longer needed. Their their value is enduring and lasts forever. And yeah. and I hope there'll be uh, Christians and Muslims and Jews and even atheists uh, forever and ever. Um, and in, in all of those books, uh, all their books, I, I get uh, spiritual food. And, and if, I, if all I had it, on a desert island was um, one passage from one of the holy books, I'm sure all of the worlds of the spirit could flow through that passage. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Sati, Siwa, Bita. Uh, Young, you wanted to say something? Oh, yes. I talk about the uh, living with all the creation. It's like in Buddha teaching, he talk about sentient. It means that the cats, the dog, the animals, the birds, they are create creation that God do for us on earth. And therefore, we, we need to love them and care for them and and respect them and try to give them salvation. So when they reincarnate, they will turn to be like human being and not to be like animals. So that's very important concept of, of Buddhist teaching. The second one is everyone got a different spiritual advanced standing, um, you know, with their religions. So what is your experience if you ever come across to to see God or God appear right in front of you and you, you communicate with God, you pray to God, you talk to God and, and, and you appear, he appeared to you or your God appeared to you in a love, peace, warm and color, maybe yellow color, rays of the sun or anything that magnificent. And then what you're gonna do? I mean, like, uh, for me, I the first thing that when God is there with me, I will ask him quickly if he can, um, you know, transfer all this experience that I have to other people, to other community, so everybody else will have the same experience as I have. So just like I say, God, 
you, thank you very much. You gave me all the experience that I talked to you, you present in front of me, and I'm in front of you and we talk and we, you know, in harmony, but can you please help other people see the same thing and communicate the same thing and see you and accept you. Just, you know, you just have to pray for other people out of your compassion and mercy. That's all, that's all experience that I got. So it depends on the education of religious study and your advanced standing or your, you know, it doesn't matter if you're not advanced or not, but then there will be other people who come and save you and educate you and train you. You know, just like a lot of things I learned tonight. Yes. And, and I think it's, it's precious knowledge that anyone should, you know, should have an opportunity to study and to learn and to get trained properly and to help other people, um, you know, follow up the, the whole training process. That's why we are, we are as, um, you know, as one. So if we are as one, if somebody is so good, then they should help other people to be good like them. Like to, you know, to become all angels of God, to go all the mansions in paradise and shouldn't be like, oh, you in a mansion of God and I'm here. You know, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, can you see the screen? Yeah. Just to say, just to say that <clears throat> to me, for me, um, I don't see any need for me to see God in a physical shape. Yeah. I can grasp existence of God from my heart, my spirit. So our spirit is the tool that we should use to understand God and his uh, station. The other thing is that uh, if you look at the comparison of human, a, a man and God, uh, Abdul Baha gives an example, a very nice example. He says that, look at a chair and a carpenter. The chair can never grasp the understanding that the carpenter has when he formed the chair and built a purpose for that chair. So the chair is in a, such a lower station than the carpenter and can never grasp the carpenter itself. So as a being, we can never grasp the station of God. And the only way we can understand the as God is through its attributes that are presented through the manifestations of God like Christ. Thank you. Uh, to all the friends, I mean, um, we remind ourselves time to time about the, the nature of the interfaith forum and um, you know, what we try to do here is to understand each other's uh, religion and to collectively uh, find the common theme in all these things. Now, I like to, uh, uh, this is a passage uh, written by Shoghi Effendi. Can everyone see this screen? No, it's not there. Huh? No, yeah. it's only the Interfaith Forum protocol is there. Okay. Um, yeah, Interfaith. Can you see this now? Yeah. Yeah, this is given by, uh, written by Shoghi Effendi, the guardian of the faith. And he says, nor does the Baha'i revelation, claiming as it does to be the culmination of a prophetic cycle and the fulfillment of the promise of all ages, attempt under any circumstances to invalidate those first and everlasting principles that animate and underlie the religions that have preceded it. The God-given authority vested in each one of them, it admits and establishes as its firmest and ultimate basis. It regards them in no other light except as different stages in the eternal history and constant revol evolution of one religion divine and indivisible, of which it itself forms but an integral part. It neither seeks to obscure their divine origin or to dwarf 
the admitted magnitude of their colossal achievements. It can countenance no attempt that seeks to distort their features or to stultify the truths which they instill. Its teachings do not deviate a hairbreadth from the verities they enshrine, nor does the weight of its message detract one jot or one tittle from the influence they exert or the loyalty they inspire. Far from aiming at the overthrow of the spiritual foundation of the world's religious systems, its avowed, its unalterable purpose is to widen their places, to restate their fundamentals, to reconcile their aims, to reinvigorate their life, to demonstrate their oneness, to restore the pristine purity of their teachings, to coordinate their functions, and to assist in the realization of their highest aspirations. These divinely revealed religions, as a close observer has graphically expressed it, are doomed not to die, but to be reborn. Does not the child succumb in the youth and the youth in the man, yet neither child nor youth perishes. I don't know how many of the Baha'is have read this and understood. If we truly understand this, we will approach the other religions and the friends from other beliefs in a different light. So uh, we are collectively learning. None of us are perfect. We are not mastered <laughs> anything or everything. We are collectively learning together. So um, I thought this is a, a worthwhile thing to remember. And I put this in our interfaith group so we can all read. Sivo, can I mention that uh, Baha'u'llah in this book says that the true learned person mm -hmm. is the manifestation of God. Yes. And we have to take his or the manifestation of God's words, which are God's words, uh, as the true balance for yes. things. And uh, this, uh, to me, this uh, passages like this has given me the burden to try and understand, to learn every other religions and to see this in the perspective of those believers and to try and reconcile the aims that uh, Shoghi Apendi says. So uh, we have much more to go, <laughs> more to do. <laughs> yes, uh, Jasper. Uh, thank you. Uh, the concept of God, where God lives, do I think God as some personality which lives away from this earth? Do I think that God is only inside some people and not inside other people? And how far I am from God? The fact is that the nearest thing which which is near me is God. <laughs> See, well, can, I, can I good. share my my uh, presentation? There was a quotation about uh, God in there, which yeah. is eloquent. Maybe I can Please read. let me complete. Then you can no, sorry, add. sorry. I thought you finished. Uh, let me complete. Yeah. So nearest thing near me is only God that is inside me inside everybody and inside all creatures on this earth. The create, creator is not away from his creation. Creator lives inside his creation always. And still the biggest mystery for this human being on this earth is when God is inside me, why, do, why can't I see? Why don't I see? 
<laughs> that is the biggest question. Why don't I see inside me, outside me? And why don't I realize why it is so difficult to realize God in the real sense? To say that God is inside me or outside me or inside the creation, that's one thing. But in factual realization of God inside me, when I see really God's light inside and God's light outside, that is a different situation. Now, what thing is stopping me from seeing, uh, becoming that illuminated a soul is all this attachment to this creation and uh, my own, uh, you can say, uh, uh, not, not good qualities inside me that are not allowing me or I really don't uh, 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 keep company with the the very the holiest of the holy people, and uh, I really uh, do not have good guidance of a of a guru who should be illuminated enough to illuminate me. So uh, when I uh, uh, all religions they adopt different methods how do I realize God? But the method which we use or uh, my guru recommends is that three things you have to do. Number one, the real guru's words, they are very strong. They can kill this darkness. They can remove this darkness. So if you read them, real guru's words, who is really is one with God, those words are very strong. If you really read them, sing them, follow them, then this darkness will be removed. Number two is company of really realized people. If you will sing these words in their company, then also uh, you will go near to God and realize God earlier. Number three is this your uh, uh, daily what you do and whether you share your earnings with other people or not, whether you ha have a helpful and a full of compassion or not, whether you love every creation on this earth and these, uh, these are necessary part of what you do outside in the world. So all these, uh, all these things slowly and slowly remove the, this darkness and we really realize ultimately that in fact I was part of God and I, God was inside me. The first time anybody sees God is actually inside him only and don't he sees it outside. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, well, um, you know, Baha'u'llah in this quotation that I'm showing to you um, explains uh, the nature of God uh, really very well, because he said, for example, to every descending and illumined heart, it is evident that God, the unknowable essence, the divine being is immensely exalted beyond every human attribute, such as corporal existence, ascent and descent, egress and regress, far be it from his glory that human tongue should adequately recount his praise or that human heart comprehend his fathomless mystery. He is and had ever been veiled in the ancient eternity of his essence and will remain in his reality everlastingly hidden from the sight of men. So the level of station is beyond us and only through the manifestations of God we can understand or grasp his existence. I feel uh, very much with uh, say concept, but I feel that God lives in within us, and I can feel that God is so close to me. And when you are especially in trouble or you have problem, uh, and when you are happy, also you should remember. But especially when you are not so happy, you feel that God is present with you and. Also, they say God is closer to you than you are closer to your <coughs> to yourself. 
And I feel that if we can feel it because we are, uh, we are closing our eyes to move some. <coughs> yeah, something happened to my throat, but I feel that <coughs> yeah, he's really right. Yes, thank you. Sachi, you want to say something? <coughs> uh, sorry, I have no comment because I have a completely different mm. concept based on science and history yes. about the creation and the creator. So I, I have no comments today, please. Thank you. Thank you for the speech. Okay. okay. 9.20, I think we can finish up. Anyone else? Um, uh, Robert? Uh, I just want to say something, Simo, that yeah. science today has shown us that this question is vaster than what we could have thought of in the past. You know, if you go to astronomy and look at the size of the universe and look at what's in there, yes. it minds boggling. You see, the creation itself is like that. Now, what God is, is beyond our understanding. Of course, we can feel him in us. We can grasp his presence and all that because of our spirit. We have further thing than the physical life. We have a spirit. Our spirit is the one that is grasping that existence, that uh, noble thing that is creator of this universe. Good, okay. Um, thank you. Who else uh, who has not spoken would like to say something? Harimal, Siva, Bayan, Vasudevan, Robert. Can I say something? Yes. Yeah. First of all, uh, greeting to everyone. And uh, thanks, Mr. Ahmad Anis. And thanks, everyone, the participant. Actually, the, the interesting thing about today uh, digital gathering is that we are all united in one uh, goal to try to understand the topic trying to understand trying to give our opinion and uh, you know this uh, digital gathering uh, bring us together that's the good thing about this gathering and uniting us okay thank you thank you anyone else Otherwise, we can uh, close the meeting. Robert? Okay. Peter? Okay, then, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to um, Ahmed and everyone who participated, especially welcome to Just Pulsing for the first time. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Siva, inviting you. me. Thank Unfortunately, you as I thank told you, you. participants. Thank you. Uh, for my maiden entry. <laughs> Hope to see you next time too, um, uh, Mr. Jaspal Singh. Yes. Yeah, as I told you, um, I, I am involved with something else on Thursday nights. Yes. So I'll be able to participate, but I think it's a nice thing that you have it here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wish the best. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thank Happy you. Maria. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.